Okay, two. What should two be? I didn't plan this out, as you can see. This is my second time making this video, so I, everything's out the window. <laughs> Hi, what's up guys? I'm Sharonik and I am Legend of Korra Trash and here are 10 reasons why you should watch the show. Oh, oh. <laughs> One. <laughs> so basically the entire show is about the new avatar called Korra who is originally a waterbender and all of her trials and tribulations to becoming the best avatar she could be and learning about things like compassion and love and stupid love triangles in season one and a whole bunch of foolishness. But this show is honestly probably one of the best ones I've seen this year and I finished the entire thing in about a week and a half because I just could not stop watching and each season only had about 13 episodes and there are only four seasons slash books because it was like book one, two, three, four. Honestly, it's it's so good, and I am so happy that uh, AJ Universe, another YouTuber, told me to watch it because I probably would have lived my entire life without watching it. Two, strong, independent female characters. That is the most marvelous thing in the world because not only is the Avatar a female, a young teenage girl who's trying to figure out life, but she's very strong and she's very intuitive and she knows, you know what, I'm the Avatar. She's known it since she was a little kid, therefore she knows that she can kick butt and she wants to strive to be the best thing that she can be. One thing that I absolutely can't stand is when in uh, movies and stuff, the main characters like, I don't want to be the Avatar. I don't want to have these superpowers. Why do I have so much responsibility? Like, it's like... Oh god, it's so played out, and to see a very strong female character who's like, yeah, I'm the Avatar, yeah, I kick butt, yeah, I know how to water bend and earth bend and fire bend, and I'm learning how to air bend and everything, it was just, it was, oh god, it was awesome. Like, that's something that I absolutely love, is just, like, characters who know that they have power and know they have responsibility and are ready to just kick ass. It's fantastic for me. Three. There are a lot of family relationships in The Legend of Korra. In, uh, in the show, you get to see uh, Aang's children and Aang's children's children, so the Avatar's grandkids, almost all of them are airbenders. You get to see Katara and her daughter and uh, their other son, so there's Tenzin, there's Boomy. Fun fact, Boomy was named after one of uh, Avatar Aang's friends. So if you go back and watch uh, one of the first few episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender, you'll see the original Boomy, which, like, I saw that and I was like, ooh! And then they have uh, a daughter named Kaya. I think that's her name. I'm pretty sure. I'm really bad with names, but I'm pretty sure her name is Kaya. Kaya's a waterbender. Tenzin is an airbender, of course, and he's living on the whole, like, to be an airbender is to be a monk and to be calm scenario thing going on. And then Boomy is actually a non-bender. So that's really cool. And uh, one thing I don't really remember, I didn't really, I watched Avatar The Last Airbender, but I haven't seen it since it kind of went off, so I've kind of forgotten everything. I'm re-watching it now, so I'll do a video about that too. For Non-benders are so awesome in the show. A lot of times you can see non-benders and think of them as weak or as of like not as cool as like benders like uh, Korra or Team Avatar who I will get into in a minute. But in Team Avatar there is um, another female character named Asami who isn't a bender but she knows how to like make cars and boats and um, cars and boats and planes. Planes. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> she knows how to make all of this really cool stuff and she also knows how to fight without bending. She knows how to do just like mortal combat and um, she actually gets this thing from one of the bad guys. I'm trying not to get super into the plot because if you haven't seen it I don't want to spoil anything for you. But she uses this really cool electricity thing and she like electrocutes people and I'm like I want to, I don't know if I want to be her or if I want to be her wife. Like, she's literally the coolest person ever. Five. Family relationships are also super important in this. Um, I know I already kind of talked about this, but you get to see uh, Toph's children slash kids and their kids and everybody... Everybody has kids, basically. Almost everyone. Except Lynn Beifong. She is a bitter, angry woman 
who I love a lot just because I see a lot of myself in her. She's bitter and she's angry and she really, she's so strong and independent and she doesn't need anyone and she doesn't need people to like her and I really respect that about her character. Like even though she comes off as harsh and mean and thinks that nobody loves her and stuff, she's still really strong and independent and she doesn't necessarily need anyone. And that's kind of where I strive to be, where it's like, I don't need friendship. I have myself. Like, it's it's good. Like, it's like, oh god, I'm explaining this so terribly, but Lin Beifong is one of my favorite people in the entire thing, and the show would not be the same without her. Six. Team Avatar is super cool. So Team Avatar is basically four kids. There's Korra, there's Bolin, there's Mako, and there's Asami. And they're They've all kind of been in this really weird, like, love triangle thing. I'm not going to get into it, because honestly, if you don't want to pay attention to the love triangles and, like, relationships and stuff in the show, you truly don't have to, because that's not the main plot point. And in a lot of kids' shows, that usually is the main plot point, like, the characters falling in love and being together and stuff, and that is not the case in The Legend of Korra. There's always, like, one main plot, and there's always one enemy that Korra and her team has to defeat and has to, you know, save the world again, and I love that. Like, even though there is love and relationships in this show, it's not necessarily a big deal. Seven. Bolin is the funniest guy in the entire show. He's so funny. Him and Milo are probably my favorite char characters. Milo is one of Tenzin's kids, which means that is Avatar Aang's grandson. He's literally hilarious, and I respect both of them for being so funny, even though Bolin and Milo tend to make bad choices. Eight. Jinora is probably the love of my life. Let's be completely honest. I love, <laughs> I love Jinora. She's very calm and she knows what to do and she's attached to the spirit world I, oh god i don't even i don't even know how to explain my love for janora um honestly she's just she is like the personification of excellence i totally said that wrong but she she's truly she's excellence and she she does no wrong in my eyes. I absolutely love this little girl who is striving to be an air master and to get her air tattoos and everything and she she's truly perfection and she she does absolutely no wrong in my eyes. Like don't you know how when a character does something wrong you be side eye and I'm like, really? She doesn't do that to me. <laughs> and almost every single character does that to me. So she's my fave. Can you tell? Nine. Mako is a hot mess. I can't stand Mako. Mako is irritating. And you're, like, if you're like me at all, you're not going to like him in the first season. Or the second season. And probably the third. I gained respect for him at the very, like, last minute. Like, I, I don't really like, I don't like Mako. <laughs> Ten. So you also get to meet the first Avatar ever. I honestly don't remember if we talked about him at all in Avatar The Last Airbender, which is why I'm rewatching it. But we get to find out the story of Avatar 1 and how he became the first Avatar and they were like, we get to find out more about light and darkness and why they have to be in balance and not one can win over the other because there can either be too much chaos or too much goodness. Tenzin and Lin Beifong used to date. Bam. My Legend of Korra was just an animation dream. There were so many different like facial expressions that I saw and like could like relate to and they and if you watch uh, pretty closely you can actually see a lot of Aang and Korra like this, they make the same facial expressions a lot and they kind of make the same jokes too which I found really cool and really attractive because the whole Avatar thing is just reincarnation and lightness and happiness and just having kind of like the same qualities and yet them still being their own people but you can still see senses of Aang and her connection with like Katara and Toph and everything it's just it's so cool and I, I use that word a lot but it was so cool like it's awesome and it's just it makes me really happy to see and I just like I get this like warm feeling in my chest and I'm like ooh another episode Okay, I think I'm done. I, 
I really hope that was 10, and if not, I apologize. Because <laughs> I, I didn't do this the way I was supposed to. So, like, comment, subscribe if you want to. I love having conversations with you guys in AJ Universe. Thank you so much for telling me to watch it, because I did watch it, and I fell in love with it, and it's amazing. So, thank you so much for that, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!